Hi, boys and girls. Ready for a story? We've been reading about a lot of different authors this week, and I couldn't let Read Across America Week go by without reading at least one book from one of my all-time favorites. Some of you may know who that is, because I've talked about it a lot. Jan Brett. I went to see Jan Brett one time, and she was even able to autograph a book for me. And I got to hear her read a book. And more than the books she writes, it's the way she illustrates them. The pictures have beautiful details. And sometimes they even have secrets. She puts a lot in the borders. Well, I found one that I haven't read to you yet. Because we read them, didn't we, a lot over Christmas and then in the winter. Well, this book is called Honey, Honey, Lion. And here you see it is by Jan Brett. It is a hardcover book, and it has what we call a book jacket. That's to protect it. It looks the same underneath, but all those book jackets keep everything nice and safe. This book takes place in Africa. Africa is below the equator, and it's warm there. So you're going to see here, there isn't going to be snow in this book. Instead, lots of animals that are different from what we have here. Here it says it, Honey, Honey, Lion, a story from Africa by Jan Brett. Now this little guy here, if you look at him quick, you'd say, oh, that's a skunk, black and white, but it's not a skunk. This is a badger, and the badger and this little bird here have a very special relationship. They help each other to get what they need. Let's see what happens. In Africa, the honey guide, that's the bird. The honey guide and the honey badger are partners when it comes to honey. The little bird follows a bee to its hive and then she leads the honey badger there to break it open with its big strong claws. Together they share the sweetness and that is the way it has always been. Now see here's a border. That's where Jan Brett hides a lot of her secrets. Maybe this ba day badger was hungrier than usual. <clears throat> Maybe he forgot about Honey Guide, who showed him the way. Or could he have been thinking, my strong claws do all the hard work. Whatever the reason, that day, Honey Badger would not share. How did he find the honey? That's right, the Honey Guide led him to it. And when he got there, he didn't share. Hmm... Honey Guide scolded Badger as he waddled back to the jackalberry tree, his tummy almost touching the ground. She fussed and fumed as he tried to fit into his burrow. Now you can see here, a guinea hen, some other animals are coming. That gives you the clue. And there goes Badger into his hole. But Badger didn't fit. He was sound asleep, smiling, snoring, and hiccuping from his big meal. Grunts. Badger roared out the loudest hiccup of all, and its deep, low rumbling gave Honey, Suck, Honey Guide an idea. You can see the animals are doing something in the borders. The next morning, Badger woke up hungry. His tummy was flat as a pancake. That's when Honey Guide flew by, heading for the great bahoba tree. Honey, 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 she cried, grinning. The little bird zigzagged over its large roots. Badger ran after her. Hit a patter. Give you a peek at the borders. Honey Guide flew low across the water hole. Badger paddled after her. Splish, splash. Honey Guide 
glided to the top of a termite mound and bounced on one foot. Sprung! Badger scrambled to the top and bounced off. Sprung! Honey Guide landed on a hollow log. It echoed as she stomped along. Boom, boom, boom. Badger hurried to catch up. Boom, boom, boom. Next, Honey Guide flitted through a stand of papias. That's the long grasses. Tall, dry weeds waved back and forth. Clickety-clack. Badger traipsed along, muttering, Where is that honey? The papias rattled as he went by. Clickety-click. Honey Guide led him through a field of golden bristle grass. Swish, swish. Badger huffed and puffed, but the thought of the delicious meal waiting for him kept him going. Swish, swish. Does look tired, doesn't he? And the animals are still talking. By now, Honey Badger was tired and wet itchy and sore, but he didn't slow down because Honey Guide was just ahead of him. She flashed her wings, fanned her tail, and dove under an acacia tree. Badger charred in after her, singing triumphantly, Honey! Honey! Lion! <laughs> Oh, look at the details. Lion, lion, lion! Badger turned on his tail and ran. Swish, swish through the grass. Clickety click into the papias. Boom, boom over the hollow log. Sprung over the termite mound. Splish, splash across the water hole. Pitter-patter over the bahoba roots. This is home. Badger dashed into his burrow. Honey Guide cheered. In a flash, Badger was as far from the entrance as he could be. Right behind him was Lion's huge paw, batting at the air. But he could not reach him. And that's the closest any animal would be to an angry lion and live to tell the tale. That evening, Mongoose squealed to Elephant, who trumpeted to Hippo, who bellowed to Warthog, who squealed to Bishop Bird, who piped to Hyena, who whooped to Zebra, who snorted to Giraffe, who was overheard by Guinea Hen, who bulged it, bugled it far and wide. It was the Bush Telegraph, and it said, if Honey Guide leads you to a beehive, be sure and re reward her, or next time she will lead you to a lion. And again, her stories are very good, but it's the illustrations, the pictures, that I enjoy most about Jan Brett. I hope you did too. See you soon, boys and girls.